thank you for coming back to Arizona. We're really happy to have you. And I'm excited to sit down with you and talk a little bit more about the Soma Technics Research Center that's moving to Arizona, becoming the Soma Technics Research Network. Well, thanks for your warm welcome, Lisa. It's wonderful to be here. I feel really embraced by the community of scholars here. Uh, and, you know, by Susan in particular, who's been a long-term colleague, friend and inspiration. So, uh, look, I've got wonderful and vivid memories of the emergence of the Soma Technics Centre. And uh, historically, I think that, you know, we all need to acknowledge that it was Nikki Sullivan's pivotal work mm -hmm. in starting a series of um, conferences, body modification conferences, which were really looking at the way in which bodies were being transformed and were taking on board a whole series of technological interventions and inscriptions in order to, from what I understood, call into question normativity, disciplinary configurations of normative bodies. So, um, you know, Nikki's body modification conferences were, I guess, really innovative on, on two fronts. One, in contesting normative notions and disciplinary notions of, of the body. And two, in looking at the way in which bodies were already enmeshed within cultural technological configurations as agents but also as targets of regimes of, of power. So uh, I can distinctly remember when Susan came out uh, for one of the conferences as a guest, uh, she'd often been keynote speaker and we were always excited to have her. And for me, uh, and of course I attended the Bob Mod conferences and, and enjoyed them immensely. For me, I can remember a conversation we had in a car, which for me was so important. We were actually driving to Macquarie University and uh, I picked up Nikki and Susan and uh, we, we were just chatting and, and we were all talking about wouldn't it be exciting to be uh, coming together and producing a centre on bodies and technologies. We were having this conversation in the car and we were all excited about the possibility of bringing together a body of people who were enthusiastic about working on bodies and technologies. And at that moment, Nikki says, we've got a great name for it. And I said, what? She said, well, look, Susan's got it. She's nailed it. Soma Technics. And I said, that's amazing. Because in one fell swoop, it just coalesced everything that we'd been talking about and simultaneously it was so innovative. No one had coined the term and it was a term that really was stood out and encapsulated economically, politically, powerfully, culturally, everything we wanted. So we, I sort of jumped for joy when, uh, you know, Susan and Nikki said that and I said, that's just brilliant. And so what we began to do was to stage a series of uh, formal and informal meetings. We had lunches together um, with a cluster of people in the department of what was then Critical and Cultural Studies at Macquarie University. And um, really the core unit at that stage was Nikki, uh, Susan of course, myself, and uh, Anne Cranny Francis, who was the head of the department, and she was extremely supportive of this venture. And so when we would meet for lunch or informally, uh, often that was the key group. Then we had a couple of formal meetings, if I remember, with the department, and they included uh, Nick Mansfield uh, and Nicole Anderson, Goldie Azuri, uh, from what I can remember, Anthony Lambert. My memory is that they were enthusiastic, but they weren't really uh, sort of committed to it in the same way, because I, I sensed that their intellectual interests were elsewhere, but they were supportive of it. So um, we just began to have these meetings and uh, it, it all sort of began to coalesce around that pivotal term, Soma Technics. From my own perspective, um, in, in 2005, I'd, um, I, I, I published this paper called Necrological Whiteness, mm -hmm. the Racial uh, Prosthetics of Template Bodies. And that was a paper in, 
in which issues of uh, technology, the body, and inscrip cultural inscriptions uh, really came to the fore. And I'd been working on issues of the body and bodily inscriptions from the time of my PhD, because my PhD was actually on uh, Nietzschean readings of uh, the discursive, social, semiotic, political construction of the body. And not the body just as a text, but as a corporal reality um, that actually produces values, you know, in, in that Nietzschean sense. So when he looks at issues of morality, uh, justice, ethics, you know, concepts that you would expect to be abstract, he actually says, well, actually, they are corporeal and bodily effects and affects. And so he does like uh, an overturning of, uh, for me, the Cartesian split. And so Nietzsche was absolutely fundamental to sort of my sort of theoretical uh, coming to terms with a revalorization of the body as, as an inscribed site, and as also a productive site. When I came to write that uh, necrological whiteness, the racial prosthetics of template bodies, uh, a, a really key figure for me was Jacques Derrida. And what I cited in there was a moment in, 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 in one, one of his essays where he talks about the impossibility of disassociating techno from physis. So the impossibility of dissociating technology from nature, uh, and nature is, you know, body, of course, uh, in that sense. And, and he says, basically, the two are indissociable. And so I'd had that background, and when I heard Susan and Nikki talk about soma techniques, I thought, you know, we could really bring to the fore this Derridean understanding of the indissociable nature of, of, of bodies as techne. And so there was like a wonderful um, overlapping and superimposition of a Derridean moment with the sort of stuff that um, Susan and, 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 and Nikki were doing. And I can actually remember when I sort of brought this to, 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 to the table. We were in the departmental meeting and um, there are a couple of people in the department who I won't name, who are no longer in the department, but they were, for some reason, antagonistic to this issue of us bringing, uh, bringing together um, and putting resources to a Soma Technic Centre. And they basically said, well, they challenged us and they said, um, you know, there's nothing really innovative about this. You know, people have been doing body and technologies for young, so why bother going ahead with it? And at that moment I said, yeah, well, people have been doing body, bodies and technologies for yonks, but they've always been talking about bodies and technologies, a sort of, you know, con really cumbersome conjunction, as though the two are absolutely separate entities. And, and it was at that moment, if I remember rightly, I, I put on the table this notion, this Derridean notion of, of techno and physics and the indissociability of the two, um, so that, you know, technological inscription for Derrida is absolutely crucial to the intelligibility of matter, nature, bodies, any materiality effectively. He says without techno, we can't make sense of materiality. And, uh, and I said, so, you know, basically, you might want to argue that, you know, that, you know, that there are a lot of people doing, and there are a lot of people doing work on body technologies, but I don't think anyone's taken this a priori position of the two techno and bodies being indissociable, as is captured so beautifully in Susan's neologism, certain techniques. So um, I think that was a really productive intervention because it shut the critics up. <laughs> and it also sort of began to, we, we began to formulate a more formal thesis about, yeah, this is a way in which Susan's term now can be shaped to, to be a unique uh, configuration of work which operates on, on, on the understanding that you can't separate technologies from bodies, that they're already enmeshed. And the hard work is to, is to do, really, the articulation of how those inscriptions are working and shaping and being productive in configurating uh, bodies in their located sites and their situated inscriptions of gender, sexuality, race, all of that. And I guess because we were all working on issues of bodily inscription, 
Nikki on uh, you know queer inscriptions like Susan, transgender, uh, sexuality, uh, myself particularly on colonised bodies, on bodies of, of, of uh, who, who are the targets of surveillance and violence, and in, uh, in particular the whole racialising of bodies and the invisibilisation of whiteness as, a, as an inscriptor, a fundamental inscriptor of bodies. Um, and so we had this really productive, and then Sam came in because she was doing a, her PhD and so she brought in uh, fatness as an inscribed body and a construction through a whole series of medicalised technologies. So we had, you know, medical technologies, racial technologies, colonial technology, technologies, sexual technologies. It was really quite an exciting um, confluence of people mapping the, you know, the operations of technologies in through uh, bodies from a, a whole cluster of different sites and, and, and positions, but also a coherence there. And also what was really exciting was the exchange and information and the firing off of each other, which was really productive because you know, we were basically sharing, for, for the first time, different theoretical uh, positions and situations and feeding off each other and informing each other with a lot of you know a lot of that exchange, so that you know Susan's work, Nikki's work began to inflect mine, and you know I began to take on board issues of transgender, issues of queerness. I mean I've done some work on queerness, but now it was really exciting to see the the, the in depth work that my colleagues were doing. So I think that was a really exciting process of dialogic exchange and syncretic you know coming together. We managed to get some funding. Anne Cranley Francis was very supportive of this, and um, Anne, uh, let me say, had also been um, really important to the project because she, as a feminist scholar, had been working with bodies and technologies, but not in that same techniques way, but still in, in a way which was crucial, I think, to her understanding what we were doing, because she'd done uh, really innovative work in the late 1980s and early 1990s on cyborgs. So, I mean, you know, that's a quintessential cyber-technic entity, right? Mm -hmm. And we decided to go for centre status. And if I remember rightly, Nikki uh, went to the Dean and she got faculty money for that and worked on establishing the Summer Technics website. Sam came on board and created a list and we, um, we all sent out um, uh, flyers to colleagues who we knew might be interested in and whose work we respected. And we got, you know, as you know, a terrific international roll call of some brilliant intellectuals working in those areas who were all excited to come on board. And so we really had an inter international body of scholars now uh, really fleshing out the Summer te te Technic Network. And of course, Susan was doing that from the States and a whole cluster of other people internationally began to disseminate it. Nikki and Sam uh, stayed convened some technic conferences, so it went from body modification to the new terminology, some technics. And if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Sam and Nikki uh, and Nicole Anderson uh, uh, convened two some technics conferences in Australia. And then they went international again, if not, I'm not mistaken. I think Nikki and Susan would be in a better position to give you that sense. The exciting thing was that with every Sam Technics conference, we had multiple special issues of international journals. So there's a published history of that body of work. And when we saw the uh, really excitement that people had around this concept of Sam Technics, and the willingness to get the work published in international journals. Uh, we came up with the idea, I can't remember who it was, it, again, it could have been Nikki or Susan, said, well, we should have our own journal. And so we began to work on uh, establishing the Summer Technics Journal, which, as you know, is a great achievement that's come to pass. It's pub published by Edinburgh University Press, and it's already published some stunning work. Sadly, and this sort of brings the Macquarie chapter to a close, um, Nikki really struggled to continue the funding uh, for the Summer Technics Centre. We lost the funding, the faculty uh, 
decided that we hadn't brought in enough external grants. Um, and so we were really ticking all the boxes in terms of an extraordinary amount of publications, journal articles, books, conferences, international collaborative networks, but in economic rationalist terms, we weren't bringing in the big bucks from external funding grants and they just cut the funding, which meant our website was shut down because we could no longer afford to operate it, have someone to update it and operate it. And um, the Summer Technics Centre uh, was closed. And luckily Susan said, well, you know, I'm in a position now to take it to Tucson. And we were really relieved actually because we didn't want it to disappear. And uh, that's, that's where we're at now.